In this tutorial, I will show you how to configure Visual Studio Code for Rust 2, mainly so you can have auto-completion and syntax highlighting to speed up your development time. So the first thing you are going to do is to go to your Rust 2 workspace, so the workspace you want to develop in, and in this workspace you are going to go to your source folder, okay, and that's where usually you will put your packages. And you are going to open Visual Studio Code from here. So you will do code dot in this repository, in this folder here. And so I do that so I can keep all the environment variables and everything. So I will have less problems. Okay, I open Visual Studio Code directly from the source repository of the workspace. So let's open it. Okay, and... So I have already some packages here. I have a C++ package, a Python package. I have also created an interface package with custom interfaces that I use in the Python code and C++ code. And as for now, as you can see, if I open the cmakelist.txt here, I don't have any syntax highlighting. If I open a Python file, well, I am missing a lot of stuff too, okay? I don't have auto-completion and syntax highlighting for those libraries, for example. And so the first thing we're going to do here inside Visual Studio Code is to open the extension tab here and we're going to search for ROS. So you choose ROS and you click on the one okay, from Microsoft. And this extension will actually work for ROS1 and ROS2. Okay, so you can just install it here and wait a few moments. All right, now it is installed and it's initializing, so let's wait a bit. And well, actually, let's close and let's start Visual Studio Code again. Okay, and well, let's go back to the extensions and see what we have installed. And you can see that, well, we have not installed just one extension, but we have actually seven extensions. So when you install ROS, it's also going to install Python, it's also going to install C++, and a few other things. So just leave it like this. Those are all the kind of dependencies of this ROS extension. And we are also going to install another one, which is the CMake. So you type CMake here, and you're going to choose the one, uh, not from Microsoft this time, but this one, TWXS, and you're going to just install that one. Okay, which is going to give us nice functionalities for CMake list uh, files. Right, and let's close that. And so now we have, well, we have eight extensions here. And we have installed ROS and CMake, and everything else was automatically added. Now let's go back to the code and let's, well, let's open any package. Well, actually, let's open the C++ package that I have here. And on the cmakelist.txt, you can see that now we have syntax highlighting and we will also have, so if I do, for example, add executable, we have auto-completion. Great. Here, you can just ignore this, okay? We're not going to install any other extension for now. Let's close that. And then if I open, so if I open this file, in this file, so this one is a, actually in my Python package. Now you can see that I have auto-completion here. You can see LCL by, and I have all the auto-completion for create publisher, create timer, get logger, info, etc. So auto-completion and syntax highlighting is working for Python and also for here, my custom interfaces that I have created. Okay, if I try to do this, you can see hardware status. This is an interface that I have created here. You can see on the left, my robot interfaces, I have created hardware status. And we also have, you can see syntax highlighting for messages. Okay, and if we go to C++, in the, I've written the same thing in C++, you can see we also have, so this is SCLCBB, we have auto-completion for that, and we have auto-completion for the custom interfaces that I have created. Okay, you can see we have hardware status.hpp that we can include that was automatically found. 
And just a quick note here where it's automatically found because I have already built the workspace before. Okay, so the of course you need to build the workspace so that the interfaces uh, header file can be found. Okay, and you can see one thing you can see here on the left is that now we have a .vs code folder, and in this .vs code folder we have C CPP properties, and inside this you can see in the include path we have everything that was added by the extension actually. Okay, so slash opt slash ross slash your distribution with includes so that you have everything you can use from your global ROS to installation and you're going to get auto completion from that and also then from your custom packages. You can also see here CPP standard is put at C14 and then in settings.json you have the extra path for Python. So everything in the global ROS to installation plus the custom packages you have created. And well, that's pretty much it. So the main thing is just to install the ROS extension here and also the CMake and you will be pretty much done for most of what you need. And now if you want to replicate this for a new workspace, so another workspace than this one, where you already have the extensions installed. So all you need to do is go to the source folder of this new workspace and just do code dot and this is going to work automatically. Thank you for watching. Now subscribe here to get more tutorials in the future. Also check out my online courses if you like what I teach. Links in the description. And see you in the next one.